Oh, it's not? And you can uh, also mention that like the, the uh, handheld works. So that's okay. That's why I'm still having the camera. Is that so? Oh, man, I made a mess. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the Zoning Board of Appeals October 10th, 2018 meeting. We're starting a little bit early this evening because everybody's here, so we'll get right through things for folks and hopefully get home earlier. Um, can everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a roll call, please? Leroy Crockett. Here. James Hebert. Here. Melinda Torrens. Here. Ed Blake. Here. Karen Shop. Shoop. Shoop. Here. Ruby Karen. Here. And we're also welcoming, welcoming Ms. Christ to our first meeting. Welcome. We appreciate you. you joining us and hopefully you'll have some fun with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, did everybody get a chance to review the minutes from last month? Yes. Any questions or comments about the minutes from last month? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. I'll second that. All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, we are going to table the approval of the draft written decisions for appeals for the findings of fact until next month. They have not been completely finalized yet, so we're going to table that going forward into the November's meeting. We'll get right into our appeals. Appeal number 2650. Please take the podium, state your name and address, and what you're looking to do, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ashley Smith, um, 39 Ingleside Drive, Discover. Okay. Um, we are looking to um, utilize our um, addition uh, to our house um, and utilize the kitchen for a small uh, commercial. Kitchen. Um, I have a small cocktail company where I make cocktail mixes, um, and I just would like to be able to do that from home. So that's that's the appeal. Um, but but the house is is zoned um, to to you know, two family dwelling residential. So it, it's just a bit of a it's been a bit of a whirlwind and talking to the planning board, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to try and get one you know one plan changed to another to another. So yeah, but anyway. Mr. Longstaff, do you have staff comments or anything additional to add? Uh, sure. Um, so, uh, as Mr. Smith stated, um, we have a non-conforming existing residential use in the Haigas Parkway District. Um, it predated uh, the current zoning, so um, it's grandfather. They um, had appeared before the zoning board a few years back and converted the single-family dwelling to a two-family dwelling. Some of the board members that are here tonight would remember that uh, that approval, and so now they're coming back because almost anything you want to do uh, when you're non-conforming use in a zone, uh, even if it's just a single-family dwelling and you want to add a garage, it's an expansion of that non-conforming use. So you always have to then come back for a miscellaneous appeal approval for that uh, uh, expansion or conversion of a, a non-conforming use. So tonight. Uh, Mr. Smith is here to um, bring his uh, appeal for uh, really a conversion of a two-family dwelling to a two-family dwelling with a home occupation, being the commercial kitchen. Um, I think that's basically it. Um, in my in my uh, summary, I put in the, the uh, section of the ordinance, Chapter 405, Section 3F. Um, that uh, gives the board the authority to um, hear these miscellaneous appeals and the criteria that you're going to be using is the special exception criteria uh, which generally looks at um, things like uh, pollution and water quality and traffic impacts and public safety as well as the home occupation standards in section 9 uh, that talk about uh, the amount of the structure that can be used for the um, home occupation, number of employees, and things of that nature. Anything else? 
Okay. We're going to do, sir, is just go through the questions each yes. individually. If you could just read off your answers as I read the questions going through. Yes. Okay. The reposed juice will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emission to the air, or water, or other aspects of its design of operation. So the, uh, the proposed home commercial kitchen will not create any additional sewage um, or emit any um, emissions into the airways. The proposed use is for a pro uh, prep kitchen only, and it's a small home, um, one, one person business, which is just myself. Okay, good. Just one quick matter of housekeeping, I apologize. We have Mr. Karen joining us. He's new to the board. Um, you are a non-voting member tonight. You're an alternate, but welcome to the board. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry about that. Just needed to get that in. <laughs> Uh, the proposed juice will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in, it, in its vicinity. Uh, there, there are no employees or customers coming to the house. Um, the kitchen would uh, not create extra traffic, um, thus there'd be no issues with uh, extra vehicles coming and going from the property. Okay. The proposed juice will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by the existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. So um, as stated above in section C, <coughs> our home occupation such commercial kitchen will not require any further um, municipal uh, protection or create any public safety problems other than the dwelling's existing uses already. Okay, great. The proposed use will not re result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. The proposed commercial prep kitchen um, operating from the property will not have any adverse effect on the sediment or erosion, um, which would affect the town water supplies in any way. Great. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. The home occupation commercial kitchen is compatible with the existing neighborhood as we are simply utilizing existing kitchen space at the home. Uh, we do not require any signage, property development, or um, the building uh, of structures to operate the kitchen. Okay, great. Are you located in the shore, is this located in the shoreline zone? We are not, no. Installing staff, you're confirming that? Confirmed. Thank you. So we don't need to really go over if you're not there. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, and interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, we are the home and land owners. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. The proposed, uh, the proposed use um, will be compatible with the existing uses of the neighborhood. The, homes, uh, the home also sits a quarter mile away from any other home or commercial dwelling. Um, and the kitchen itself will be used for commercial purposes on a part-time basis, Monday through Friday. Thank you. Stalling staff, what page am I looking for for the um, home-based occupation? I'm trying to find it here. through section nine, but it's not popping right out at me. We just need to go over the home based home occupation. occupation standards mm -hmm. are, I think, on page 38 of section nine. I believe so, 38 to 41, I think it was. Home occupations, thank you. <coughs> All right, let's go over those questions, and you can just give you off your answers. Yes. The occupation of professionals shall be carried out wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory <coughs> thereto. That's correct. Yes. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for the residential purposes. Yes, it is. It's part-time. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. It's a one person. Yeah, just myself. You're aware that you can get an exterior sign and it has to be in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under this section and regulation subject sec section E. Okay, thank you. Not required, but thank you. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. You don't have lobster traps, do you? No, we do not. Okay. No. No nuisance shall be generated, included, but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. I understand. It's our home. 
The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Yes, I understand. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. I understand. Home occupation may, no, may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area provided that for the purposes of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Unfinished attic and basement spaces and spaces within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area you usually give us that, yeah. that it's within that. He meets that. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following. The total area devoted to the retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within the building. You're not going to be doing retail sales, are you? Not required. Thank you. The sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises, and seafood caught or harvested off, off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by the one employee permitted under paragraph 3 above. I understand. No seafood. A fish, fisherman, lobsterman, or shellfish harvester need not obtain home occupation approval except to engage in retail sales allowed by the paragraph. It's not going to be applicable here. And you're not doing motor vehicle repairs or anything there, right? Yeah, certainly not. Are there any questions from the board? No. No questions. No, no questions. I got a question. <coughs> um, yes. This is a two family house? It's, it's technically listed as a two family dwelling, yes. Is is it occupied by two families? Uh, it's it's occupied by my father-in-law and my and myself and my wife. Oh, okay. No. So it's all in the family. Yes. <laughs> and I take it your father-in-law is in agreement with this. Uh, he is. Yes. <laughs> I hope he is. Okay. Thank you. Is this a new business or is this something? Uh, it's an existing business that I've been running for, um, I think, three years. Um, we've been using a, a space in Biddeford, which is, um, which is no longer available. So yep. we're looking to, to utilize the space we have at home. We have a, um, a kitchen addition that's gone on. So we have a new kitchen and, and a new dining space. So we're really just um, making use of the previous space we had. Um, yeah. I see. I'm going to go into the uh, performance standards for home-based oc occupations. I'm not going to read through them again unless anybody here would like me to. I think we've got pretty much a good gist of this, and we can just have a vote as to whether or not we would approve or not that he meets all of these guidelines beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the performance standards, home occupations, number 1 through 12 being met. It's unanimous. Let's go back special exceptions and go down through those questions. I'd like to open it up to the public hearing. Seeing no one is here from the public hearing, close the public hearing. There were no written letters or comments. Thank you. Um, let's go down through these one by one. A, the proposed use will not create san unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or, or water, or other aspects of its design of operation. Mr. Karen, you can certainly put your two cents in if you want, or just pass. All set. Thank you. <laughs> no comments. It sounds like he's met everything fine. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I'm going to do some finding of fact here. Yeah, the I mean, he's he's demonstrated that, or he's demonstrated in the application that you know, he isn't going to create any un unsanitary or unhealthful conditions. Right, and he's on his own well and his own septic system, so he's not putting it back into the town or anything like that. So I'm sure he's going to want to maintain his own system Correct. properly. Correct. Yeah, I think with what the applicant's given us, we've got ample information to be able to say that that is met in my mind. All those in favor of A being met? It's unanimous. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Stop back down here again. No comment. Sounds like it's not going to create any additional traffic. I mean, it's the same two families living there. 
They might be doing something else on, inside, but that's it. Could be anything different. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I mean, there's no way that he can add any kind of impactful traffic to uh, Hagus Parkway already, so. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and he's not going to have any employees, and no. look at you, you don't have to go to Biddeford every day now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you said you're not going to be having people come and go anyway. No. And I'm assuming you must have, like... We have some deliveries. If you've got a two-family house, you must have, like, a little turnaround out where you can back in. We have a whole out. pond that you can drive around. Okay. Yeah, great. We, we, we have uh, plenty of... Chairman, I got turning property up on this cool. Cool. Yeah, I can't see it. <laughs> you can't well, see it? I That's actually an old I can photo. see a little bit. <laughs> and now I really can't see it. <laughs> just, just know that it's right next. Okay, to so it just goes up and around. It's all dirt. You can drive okay, around. I was looking can, between the houses. Okay, you can so turn around in front of the house, so you can go all the way around. There's okay. Of you can receive deliveries by boat too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be a little bit more expensive. <laughs> um, all those in favor of B being met? It's unanimous. C. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different than those created by the existing use in the neighborhood or require a substantially de greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Please don't use Mr. Longstaff's suggestion because that might put you into this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't see where it's going to change anything on this particular part. No. I have nothing to add. No, I don't see any changes. Just using the kitchen more. No boats, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, I think, I know where this is now, so I think I'm good with that. I, I think you've demonstrated that you're not going to have an issue with that in this neighborhood. All those in favor of C being met? It's unanimous. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have any adverse effect on the water supplies. I think you've got quite a few water supplies around you. <laughs> is that down the end? No comment. Again, doesn't seem to have any effect. There's no change. Do you have a well? We do, yes. We have septic and a, and a water well, yes. No comment. We need to do some type of comments just so everybody can understand. So we're trying to do findings of fact. Mr. Longstaff's trying to type up something in support of our decision. So we have to give him something to go on so he doesn't have to try to make it up. Um, he's clearly stated that, I mean, he's not going to do anything to jeopardize his own personal well, so there's no reason for him to, to you know, dump anything hazardous in there. And also the profession that he's working with wouldn't generate anything hazardous that would uh, potentially contaminate a nearby water source. Right, he's making no actual changes to the property. He's simply just using his kitchen more. Is that where the Kiwanis generally does their fishing tournament? Um, many years ago, yes. They used okay, to so trout, do trout fishing tournaments, so many, many years ago. Not for a year, no. Okay, so it's just a pond now. The, the birds take the trout, so it's not worth stopping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I think you're, if you've got your own well, you're not going to be putting it anywhere. I mean, you're not going to be disposing of it anywhere to affect the water. I mean, that water's really, it's just water without anything in it. it doesn't we, really we, swim in, we swim in the right. larger pond, so we're not going to be putting anything in there. That's... Mm -hmm. Thank you. All in favor of D being met? It's unanimous. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Start down the send again, please. It sounds like the home business is all interior, no exterior effects? Correct. Yeah, he's not expanding the property. He's not, he doesn't even have a use for a sign. Um, I see nothing changing. As far from the exterior of the compatibility of the neighborhood. He is the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I mean, Hagus is already a you know, commercial industrial zone, so he's, he's not adding or subtracting from anything there. I agree. Yeah, there's not much to go on. As Mr. Blaze had said, there's not much neighborhood there. I mean, you pretty much are your own neighborhood. We are the there. neighborhood at the moment. So, I mean, you're not going to be creating... Nope. Not for much longer. Any uses or anything that would have any impact on visual size or proximity. And I think even the new high end apartments are way down from you. Yes, they are. Yeah. All in favor of E being met? It's unanimous. F, if not located in shoreland zones, anybody need me to read over that or can we just no. say that we're all in agreement? All in agreement. Okay, so F is unanimous. 
The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Is that down the same again? Sounds like he and his father-in-law um, have sufficient ownership of the property. Yep, there's evidence of a deed here that shows that they've got the right to, to use the property however they like. Deeds present. Show that they've owned it and own it. Yes, and this is not their first time before the board. Yeah, I think you've given us sufficient information showing you the ownership of this. Thank you. All in favor of FBM? It's unanimous? G. Or G. A G, sorry. G. Excuse me, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Should have brought my glasses tonight. Uh, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to the subsection 5 of this section. Is that down the same again? Sounds as if he's been doing this for several years now and um, he's doing it successfully. Yeah, it's an existing business. I can actually see where this would actually improve his financial resources, locating it at his home versus having to rent a space out elsewhere. So. Thank you. He seemed to indicate that uh, the business is running now and continue to run. He's already made the changes to the building, so. I agree with Ms. Torrance and Mr. Blake. Yeah, I agree with the board. Yeah, I think you have the technical and financial ability. I don't think we're going to impose anything on you. We would have mm -hmm. brought it up by now. <laughs> so I don't think that's really that's necessary as to what we're looking at. All in favor of HBM Met? It's unanimous. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Again, you are your own neighborhood, but we'll start down this side again. Um, no comment. Yeah, again, I don't see where there's going to be any difference in, in current activity. No. Business as usual. He's located in Hagas Parkway, and anything he'll do will not add to any sort of sound level that's already being generated there. I think if anything would add to the sound level, it would be your neighbors who have a really booming business over there with the rock climbing, <laughs> and they're pretty close. Yeah, they are close. Yeah. All in favor of IBM at unanimous is their motion. Uh, move to approve appeal number 2650 as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. That was Mr. Hebert that made yep. the motion. Okay. He's done it. You're all over it. Got it. <laughs> Didn't want to make it. What's that? What section is this? Section B. Okay. Four. Yeah. Starts on page six, goes to seven. All right, appeal number 2651, miscellaneous appeal by St. Clair Associates on behalf of GNC LLC 336 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U039, Lot 001. Please state your name and where you're from and what you're looking to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of GNC LLC. Um, we are here tonight to present to you a request for a two-part uh, miscellaneous appeal. And uh, this is uh, stemming from some work that actually happened in the summer of last year uh, with an expansion of a slope area uh, onto the abutting property. The actual abutting of property is also owned uh, by Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall uh, is associated with GNC LLC, but he's also associated uh, with 334 US Route 1 Scarborough LLC. So he owns both of the two pieces of property in question. Uh, there was some drainage work that was done uh, on the site back last year, and as part of that work, the slope was adjusted. It was about a five to eight foot change in grade uh, from the site in question, uh, which is the home for Crossroads Automotive. There's also a rental home on the property. Uh, Mr. Hall's budding property has a rental home on it as well. So in adjusting that slope, uh, it allowed for a larger, flatter area for uh, use of the Crossroads Automotive site. In doing that, that's an expansion of an existing non-conforming use. So that's one part of our uh, miscellaneous appeal request. The other is that because it is on the adjacent property, we're seeking an approval as part of the miscellaneous appeal to allow that parking to occur in an easement on Mr. Hall's abutting property. 
Uh, as part of the process, we needed to have an advisory opinion from the planning board. We were actually before the planning board last night. Uh, we did receive positive comment from the board members, and uh, we're here before you tonight uh, to discuss the appeal request. Uh, once this is this process is through, and hopefully we do have a positive recommend a positive decision from you folks, we're actually back to the planning board for an amended site plan to address the changes uh, that had happened on the site. There are no proposed business changes associated um, with these adjustments. It's simply to uh, improve the maneuverability within the site itself. Uh, if you had seen the plan that's in our packet that was the uh, plan that was approved in 1998, there was sort of a pinch point uh, near the corner of the building where the drive aisle was about 17 and a half feet wide. Uh, even a fire lane now is 20 feet wide. So uh, with the adjustments that were made, we're able to have that be 25 feet wide uh, and throughout the site. This helps with winter maintenance uh, and also maneuverability within the property. So uh, we're not proposing to expand the business itself or anything uh, associated with that, but uh, it is technically an expansion of the site. So we're here tonight. Do you still have that Google one? Do I still have what? The Google Earth picture? So the business. one to the left is his as well, correct? Where the uh, grade is? Where the cursor is right now, that's yes. the driveway to the adjacent property that Mr. Hall owns. So that's a rented house back there. And uh, the slope area in question is right where the cursor is now. Uh, Crossroads Automotive uh, Building is the gray building to the back of the site. And the white cape is a rented residence as well. Thank you. Mr. Longstaff, do you have any staff comments or anything further to add? Uh, I think Ms. Sinclair said it quite well. It is a little bit odd in that um, not only is it an expansion of a non-conforming use, but it's an expansion of a non-conforming use onto an abutting property. So a couple of things come into play. There is a provision in the ordinance that does allow commercial establishments to utilize um, parking that's required for their business on an, another property, but they have to come to the planning board for that and get that approval through the planning board. In this case, the properties are owned by the same individual, and you have a non-conforming residential use on the adjacent property at 334 US 1, and a non-conforming residential use plus a commercial use at 336. So it's really more of um, a conversion of one non-conforming use to another, or the ex you can look at it as that, or an expansion of a, a non-conforming use onto another property that already has a non-conforming use. So really what the board's going to try to determine is, is this any more impactful than the existing non-conforming use that's there um, on the abutting property? And is the, is the expansion of the car dealership or the Jeep repair dealership over onto that property going to create any of the um, uh, impacts that the criteria asks about traffic impacts, public safety, and those sorts of things. That's really where it's all coming coming from. And it's, it's a little bit of a different animal than what you're used to because it, it involves the next door neighbor who happens to be the same owner. So that's just a, a, a little bit of a wrinkle. And, and we frankly all scratched our heads about that a little bit in earlier discussions when this happened, and we basically put the onus on the applicant to demonstrate how they could take that use and expand it over onto the property. A couple of different options would have been to change the property lines, but that would have made the lot more non-conforming because of the lack of frontage. Um, and so I think the result is that they feel like they can, they can do it through an easement the owner's granting himself an easement for, for that, um, and that the, the fact that both properties are currently in non-conforming uses really doesn't change things much. Okay. And we wouldn't have caught this originally because when it was first before? We wouldn't have caught it. I what? thought this was first before us, like, didn't you say like a year or two ago or something? The, the physical changes happened uh, on the site last year. Okay and the applicant did not come before you folks or the planning board oh, as okay. part of that. All right. There was an earlier, I'm 
several years ago, back in the 90s. That's what I thought I heard. Yeah, okay. they, yeah. they, had, okay. they had received miscellaneous appeal approval for the, the non-conforming use to expand it, and I think this, the restriction was put on them at that time of no more than, um, help me, Nancy, was it 20 vehicles for display? Um, that's correct. That actually stems from a 1985 original site plan, uh, special exception, excuse me, Board of Appeals approval um, in 1985. And there were notes uh, that were on the 1998 plan that referenced that. And there were three conditions that were on the plan, and we've added those to the plan as well. And they are, number one, no more than 20 cars displayed on the premises at any one time. Uh, number two, an entrance be provided to the property by Nobile Avenue and an exit from the existing driveway. We're not proposing to change any driveway um, curb cuts or points of access for the site. Uh, and the three, uh, four white pines, six to eight feet high, be planted in front of the house. So those were the three conditions that were opposed, imposed uh, as part of the 1985 uh, Board of Appeals special exception approval for a prior owner. The applicant, um, when he had his business on the site in 1998, received an amended plan approval to expand the garage uh, on the back of the site. Uh, so that was done in 1998. Okay. Let's go through the questions. Can I, can I just yeah. ask one question? Uh, Brian, did you say the abutting property is a non-conforming use? Right, because it's, it's, a, it's a, B3, a residence. It's a B3 district, and there's a single family dwelling there. Okay, but that, that was there before. Right, long time. but it's, it's, a, it's an existing non conforming mm -hmm. use. It's grandfathered. Yeah. Okay. It's been there for 20 years. But again, if they wanted to build a garage for that, yeah. they'd be in front of us with the same request. Mm -hmm. so, so almost everything that we're talking about here is non conforming. Mm -hmm. Right. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Lump it all together. <laughs> Let's go through the um, questions. Please read the answers um, briefly to us as to what you have for answers for these. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. There are no proposed changes to waste disposal associated with this appeal, and no changes to air or water emissions are anticipated. The existing residence and automotive repair garage have been located on the site for many years and have not been enlarged or expanded as part of the work on the slope. And that slope rock wall didn't create anything either when it was built? As far as sewage disposal? No. As far as, like, unsanitary. Okay. Great. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicle or particular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. It's always been an area of concern over there. The applicant is not proposing to increase the allowable number of vehicles on display on this site beyond the 20 vehicles previously approved with the prior 1985 special exception approval. There are no proposed building expansions that would affect the level of vehicular or pedestrian activities in the area. The expansion of the site onto the newly graded area has improved uh, pedestrian and vehicular maneuvering area on the site by expanding the available space between the residence and the vehicle parking area to a minimum of 25 feet at the Route 1 site entrance. This meets the current parking standards for a two-way drive aisle. As shown on the enclosed 1998 approved site plan, this dimension was previously only 17.5 feet, which is less than the town's minimum recommended 20-foot fire lane width. And I'm assuming most of the traffic that exits the facility uses the Scarborough Downs light where you got your four-way intersection there? Um, that's actually an intersection where there's, it's, uh, you can make an exiting right uh, into the, what would be the eastbound lane uh, of Route 1. Um, it would, there's no signal head at the light, although it comes in at the intersection, there's no signal head benefiting this. Okay, so there's this nothing across the, the street from Scarborough Downs. There's just one <coughs> or a telephone pole for this, for Not, Scarborough Downs. Scarborough Downs has its, Scarborough okay. Downs Road has its signal head, yep. but there is not one on the back okay. side for this site. Okay, thank you. The proposed use does not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. 
there are no anticipated public safety concerns with the expansion of the parking area. In fact, the expansion has eliminated a pinch point between the parking area and the access to the house and to the garage, ultimately making it easier for public safety apparatus to navigate through the site. Thank you. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, as previously noted in our packet and description, when the initial work was being conducted, the town engineer prepared a restoration plan to stabilize the regraded slope area. The applicant used the information provided in the restoration plan to complete the earthwork on his site. Erosion control mix was installed at the toe of fill and the steeper portions of the slope were stabilized with riprap. The expanded level area on the site has been graveled and there are no apparent areas of erosion along the slope. Drainage in the area will follow the same general patterns of runoff as the existing site. The site will still drain towards the abutting site owned by Mr. Hall. The surface of the expanded area is proposed to remain gravel and will allow for vehicle display. The slope area is stabilized with riprap, which will help to reduce runoff velocities and avoid concentrated runoff to the abutting site. The receiving area is a grass location that drains via an existing culvert under the driveway to the abutting residence owned by Mr. Hall at 334 U.S. Route 1. The expanded slope area does not show evidence of erosion or accumulated sediment. Thank you. The proposed use be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. The site has been used as a mix of residential and automotive uses for over 30 years and will remain compatible with the existing uses in the area. The expansion of the parking area is not proposed to increase the intensity of the use of the site. The expansion will eliminate the pinch point in the driveway to make accessibility easier for the tenants and for the patrons visiting the garage and car sales. It's not anticipated that there will be any measurable changes in visual impacts or density of development in the area. Well, on this next one, the river runs <coughs> probably behind his house way back there, right? so we're not looking at any water coming through. Like I know we have the property, like two down where the Prompto building is being right. built, it has the river right behind it. Right. Mr. Chairman, yeah. if you note on the rendering there, you can see on the bottom edge, um, that's Millbrook. There is a 75-foot <coughs> stream protection district. We are well outside of that. Okay, great. Thank you. So you're not in the shoreland zone. We can confirm that. Uh, right. Thank you. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Mr. Hall owns both properties in question. The applicant is proposing to obtain an easement from 334 U.S. Route 1 Scarborough LLC to G&C LLC for the entire expanded slope area to allow parking on his abutting property. Copy of the deeds, copies of the deeds for both sites are included. A letter regarding the proposed parking easement is also included as part of this application package. Thank you. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to <coughs> carry out the proposed use. Just did that. Already gone over that. <laughs> applicant has technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. The site work has already been completed on this property. Since the applicant owns both sites, there's very little anticipated financial requirements other than any conditions either the Board of Appeals or the Planning Board may impose as normal maintenance up and upkeep of the property, which has been demonstrated over the past several years of the applicant's ownership of both of these properties. The applicant has retained his attorney, Peter L. Hatem, and our office to provide legal and technical support throughout the local review processes. Thank you. The proposed use will be compatible with existing use in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. There what are no the hours of, of operation right now? Do you know? I don't. Okay. Um, the, there are no proposed changes to the types of existing uses on either of the lots. Okay, thank you. Do we have any letters on this at all? I'd like to open it up to the public hearing. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Open it up to questions from the board. I think she's done an absolutely wonderful job in presenting this, especially in answering the questions. I'm going to have to pass on every single one of them as you read them, because she said everything. Mm -hmm. Nice job.
Nobody? No questions. Okay, let's go down through the questions then. The proposed use will not create unsanitary <coughs> or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design of operation. And please, everybody, just expand whatever you can just to help out Mr. Mullen's staff with doing the findings of fact. We appreciate it. Sounds as if the recent changes will actually yeah, um, improve the drainage. <coughs> yeah, it sounds like there's no change to any use of the property, so um, I don't see where there'd be any more concern. Right. The use remains the same. The only change was some slope work. The, um, she noted that <coughs> the repair garage uh, hadn't been enlarged or expanded as part of the work on the slope. Nice. Yeah, I think you folks have already gone over everything. I mean, the proposed use, it's not really changing except for the slope, and that's really what we're looking at. So, all in favor of A, B, and MET? Unanimous B. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. It sounds as if there will be no change to the amount of traffic from the property. Yeah, I think it, you know, nothing's, in, nothing's increasing, so it's, there's no additional. Uh, well, the juice uh, remains the same. <coughs> they're, um, again, they're, they're not increasing <coughs> 20 vehicles previously approved in the, pre, in the prior 1985 special exception. Um, they're improving the pedestrian vehicle maneuvering area, the proposed plan on the site. Um, and then she also mentioned that, again, this is all supporting the fact that it's in actually improving the safety conditions in the facility uh, with only a 17 and a half inch, 17 and a half inch, 17 and a half foot wide, um, Fire with they're increasing it to 20 to make it more uh, reasonable in the unlikely event that uh, anything were to happen. I think Mr. Hebert got it all there. Yeah, I'm still amazed that there's no light on the other side, to be honest with you. Because, <laughs> I mean, with what's coming, I'm sure there should be one, but um, it, I don't think it's going to create any more traffic than's already there. It's going to be a tight turn with, when you're coming without a light. So um, I don't think it's going to add any foreseeable traffic conditions or pedestrian conditions. <coughs> All those in favor of B being met, it's unanimous. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by the existing <coughs> uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or, protect or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. There will not be any additional uh, safety hazards beyond what's existing? Um. Additionally, there's, there's, they've eliminated the pinch point, which makes it uh, more accessible. I, I think it's an improvement. No comment. Again, it's an, it's, it's going to be an improvement to the existing um, area, and they're not, the information they provided doesn't give any indication that it's going to create additional public safety problems. Right, I agree with the board. No, it's they're in the they're in the same situation as the other two houses. They're pretty much right next to them on both sides. They're both uh, kind of kind of hazardous to get out of at times, but this isn't creating anything in more in depth than that. So all those in favor of C being met, it's unanimous. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Uh, previous work proved the existing slope and stabilized it. Yeah, I think they've improved it by stabilizing it with the riprap, and I, it doesn't sound like there's any reason for concern. The only work that they've really done is on the slope, and it looks like, the, from what they say, the, uh, the work was all done, and the water moves away, is not causing any sedimentation or erosion. I'll just add to that, the, the town engineer prepared a restoration plan to stabilize the area, um, and the applicants using this information and the plan provided by the town engineer to complete all the site work. 
Right, and they have the luxury of they've already had it there for a year, and they've shown and demonstrated that it hasn't had any impact. Yeah, I mean, you gave us ample information about what you've done, how it's stabilized, how it's actually secured and stuff, and the slope's not going down. It's not doing erosion or anything. The water resource is way behind, <coughs> so I think I'm fine with that. Uh, all in favor of DB admit? It's unanimous. E. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. There will not be, it sounds as if there will not be an increase in the limit of 20 vehicles on the property, therefore not a change to the visual impact. Yeah, so the use is the same. It's been for 30 years, so I can't see where it would change anything. Right. I agree. As Mr. Karen pointed out, no increase in vehicular activity, and they're actually improving it by eliminating the pinch point in the driveway to make accessibly accessibility easier and safer. I agree with the board. Yeah, I mean, it's compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood. The only thing that may not be is the house that's down in the back. So, I mean, there's like one house in that, that entire section over there. So, I think we're definitely compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood and physical size and everything is not changing. All in favor of E being met? It's unanimous. F, if located in a shoreland zone, I'm just not going to read that. If they're not located in a shoreland zone, is everybody okay that that's been met? Let's have a boat. Everybody else met? Oh. Unanimous. Okay. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, and interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. It sounds as if uh, Mr. Hall owns both the property in question and the adjacent property. Yeah, he owns both properties. If he wants to encumber one with an easement, I don't see why, you know, we should worry about that. He's done everything already. The deeds are present, so I have nothing to add. I agree. Yeah, we have the deeds here, and it's not like you have another neighbor that you're dealing with. You're dealing with yourself, <laughs> so you can kind of do what you want to do yourself. So um, I would agree that that's going to be met, and you're looking out for the neighbors in the direct neighborhood, so... <laughs> Um, all in favor of GB and MET? It's unanimous. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to be, meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. No comment. Work's been done. It's probably been paid for. It's all dealt with. It doesn't sound like there's going to be any additional financial burden. Well, certainly there's no... Uh Fine, right? Is that true, Brian? There's no fine? Um, no, because the That's applicant has engaged in the services to try to correct the problem. So it's, he's been actively engaged. It's been a little longer than we would have liked to have seen. but Okay. But there's no fine pending? No fine pending. Okay. But we don't know if the, the planning board during their site plan amendment process may require some additional things. I okay. don't know what those would be. I guess the question is, does the board see any conditions that it wants to impose. Just going to answer the questions. I have nothing to add on this one. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have anything more that we need to impose ourselves. I don't see that there's been anything that's been sent down from the planning board asking us to impose anything. They're just asking us for our decision on this, whether a yay or nay, and mm -hmm. then it goes back to them for final approval. So I don't see any conditions that need to be met on this or put in place by us. Does anybody else feel differently on that? Yeah. Everybody's okay? Um, all in favor of HBMM? It's unanimous. I, the proposed use to be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. The use will remain as existing. Once again, there's no change. Yep, no change. Agree, there's no proposed change and Anything that do there will be in um, will be in kind with the amount of noise already generated on Route One. I agree. Just for a matter of putting into the public record, what is the hours of operation? Do, we, do you know? Um, that's my husband. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know? Neither you know. Uh, I don't. The okay. only thing we could check online and see if their website shows their hours okay. of operation. Yeah, I just request getting that back to the planning board when you come before them just Absolutely. to make sure that nothing's changed there. Correct, yep. Thank you. 
All in favor of aye being met. It's unanimous. Open it up for a motion. Make a motion to approve appeal number 2651 as presented. Second. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? We'll shoot you in favor as well. What? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> it's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Mr. Longstaff, do you have any zoning board comments or any matter of housekeeping that we need to go through? Or? Um, the only thing I would mention is that I believe on the late, later this month in October, there will be a meeting of the ordinance committee. Um, if you recall, a few meetings ago, I asked if the board, the zoning board, would uh, support a letter um, authored by staff and signed by the chairman to have the ordinance committee consider looking at alternative um, amendments to our sort of corner lot provisions, multiple lots with multiple frontage. Um, they somewhat reluctantly, um, I guess, are going to, they've asked, to put, they, they want to put that on their agenda for this meeting later this month. It didn't get on the other meeting that they had um, earlier in their late September. Um, so they, they, they are going to at least put it on the agenda. I don't get the sense that they see that there's any need to really do anything, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, they were more concerned with how many, the numbers, they wanted to see the numbers <coughs> of appeals that came to this board that involve corner lots or lots of multiple frontages um, as some sort of a yardstick, I suppose, to know whether or not it was an issue. Can it go with the last year? It's been like four, maybe? I would say probably that's about right, and I would say probably it's about an average of five or six a year that we see that involve multiple frontage lots, and they're usually asking for a setback reduction on one of those fronts. Um, uh, it, I don't know if that's a crushing number or not, but it's 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 prevalent enough that we see it often, yeah. and that's why it's a strong percentage. Of the, I, I think it is. I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't. I don't know that I have the staff time, quite frankly, to go pile through the files and and dig out the numbers in time for the meeting. Um, it would be, you know, hopefully I can get some and some some uh, statistical information for them that's more than anecdotal, but. Um, that's what they're looking for, so I'll do my best to, to provide that. And I don't know if the board wants to offer any additional comments um, or not, but that would certainly um, uh, be in keeping, I guess, with the, you know, if I could bring anything, any, you know, if you have any comments, I guess I'd like to bring those to the ordinance committee at that time. Yeah, I think basically our biggest comments is it makes it very difficult for us to try to determine where we're starting from when they come for an appeal. We had one that lasted well over an hour where we were trying to figure out where we were going with it. And mm -hmm. I think one of those actually ended up going further out than us, I believe. I'm not positive on that. Was that one that was actually litigated? I'm not positive. There was one that it was really challenged as to where the frontage was. I thought there was some type of litigation. Well, that, that. In, in that case, the, the question was, did they have frontage? Yeah. It wasn't multiple right. frontages. Okay. It was no frontage. Okay. Okay. Uh, that right. was kind of in the opposite direction. Right. Um, we're, we're talking about lots like the one that you had recently at Pine, Pine Point. I was going to say. The we back had, deck. We had one, exactly. one night we had three or four of them, yeah. or, or, yeah. or two or three of them at least, I think. And I remember in years past, several cases that I, I remember I think Eider was uh, Eider construction was involved uh, in uh, Prouts that had the same kind of issues there were multiple frontages um, or at least two frontages that reduced the building window down to nothing um, yeah. we were trying to relocate a building in a more conforming way when there was no building window basically because right. of the multiple frontage issue and I think we're it, most recently it came to me was a case uh, down around Massacre uh, Pond in, in Prout's area where you have those two small uh, garrison and Massacre Lane and none of the houses are conforming. They're all 10, 15 feet or you know, relatively close to the traveled way 
And so that's, an, that's, that's a good example where if somebody was going to comply today, they would look completely out of place, kind of like Higgins Beach when we were trying yeah. to make people be 30 feet away from the, yeah. the street when everybody else had their front porch for, on the sidewalk. You know? So it's kind of one of those sort. We're, we're trying to force and impose, I think, and I don't know if the discussion will go towards certain sections of town where it's more appropriate because of historical development patterns. Maybe that's the way it's going to go. I, I really don't know. I just feel like, and I think the board has given, certainly given me the impression that it, it also feels like there's a number of uh, appeals that come to you that involve that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I know at Higgins it's worked very successfully having a primary and a secondary frontage. Um, and it, it allows it allows people to kind of build in a historical pattern that's that's they see on the adjacent properties, and where in other sections of town you don't get that. You 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 end up sticking out like a sore thumb because everybody else is much closer to the road, and you're forced to squeeze something into a very small building window because you have multiple larger setbacks than the 15. I think we are pretty much all in unanimous agreement on having staff generate something and just bringing it to us and we can certainly sign mm -hmm. off on it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it would be nice to minimize what the board is seeing, but also make it available to our residents who have these non-conforming lots to not have to go through this whole process for something like that. Well, and I think too, the, the last discussion I remember of that night that we saw two or three of them all at one night um, was having a set of guidelines that does really clearly identify how we make this decision. And giving and giving the population some way of, of understanding how the decision will be made and whether the likelihood is, you know, whether it should be heard or not. It um, makes that decision making capability easier, but yeah. it also addresses the fact that the applicant has something to go with when they come before us. Yes. So that we're not really looking at something that they're trying to figure out. What do I do with right. this, and where has it got to go? So, I, as you recall, I did. I did do a little research in neighboring communities, yeah. and there you were a variety of different ways that t towns <coughs> handled it, and in some towns they handled it no differently than we do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but you know, if you expanded that search, you'd probably find you know that it's sort of a 50-50 split between something different than what we do and something very similar to what we do. Um, it would be nice for applicants to have a predictable outcome. Like mm -hmm. that's what we're really trying to to do: take the onus off having to meet some kind of um, subjective criteria um, and, and get them into a predictable situation where yeah. it can either be based on a percentage of setbacks on either side of them or a percentage of a reduction of the allowed setback if the house was built, you know, before a, a certain date, uh, something, you know, in, in that way it takes it out of a zoning board of appeals situation and gives us measurable things to look at. I think that would be great. Other than that, uh, the only other comment is, again, welcome uh, to Rudy Karen. Uh, thank you for joining us, and, and we're really pleased to have Doreen Christ here um, as our administrative secretary. She's doing a great job. She had trial by fire last night at planning board and zoning board tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, yes, and my apologies to Mr. Karen, because I didn't mean to have you go first out of the group, so I apologize for that. So as yeah, I went down to that end of the table, welcome. you did a very good job. You came up with some good of <coughs> answers. And that's what we need. We just need to have answers that are findings of facts that Mr. Longstaff can put into the decision. But I didn't mean to hang you out to dry out there. I apologize. Um, any other comments? Um, okay. Everybody get out and vote. Big election coming up. Um, Good luck motion to adjourn. Right. Thank you, sir. Yes. I may or may not be sitting here in November. I don't know. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Unanimous. So, oh, we're up. Keep. What? Are we keeping the pattern of the findings back for next month or are we just going to give that back?